Okay, welcome back to Strange Coach Tutorials. And in today's tutorial, we're going to talk a little bit about correlations and doing scatter plots to look at different relationships between the different exercises and metrics that you might be tracking. This is going to be really powerful if you want to determine how one metric may be affecting another metric and make changes to your training plan based on this information. So let's get after it. Okay, so we're back and we are starting with a little bit of data here on the left hand side. Um, we have the athletes from 1 to 10, the date that they actually perform their test. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And then we have some counter movement jump values in inches and some broad jump values in centimeters. And what we're going to do today is just do a simple correlation between the counter movement jump and the broad jump and then look to see what the relationship looks like. And then we're going to graph that on an XY scatter plot and take a look at the equation and sort of figure out what the R squared value is and, and how the one variable is affecting the other variable. This will be a little bit of a quicker video, but it's really important when you are taking in any fitness testing data or anything that you may be tracking or monitoring that you figure out how different variables are relating to each other. And then it kind of gives you a bit of guidance in, in how you're going to train your app. With that in mind, we're going to get after it. A quick reminder that if you are liking any of the videos and you find value in them, if you could like and subscribe to the channel and share it on social media, that helps me out the most, helps me get more people to the channel and helps me keep up with the current schedule that I have of trying to post a video every Monday and Wednesday. So without further ado, let's get into this. As we do with most of the data that we work with, one of the first things that I want to do is actually take this data and turn it into a table and then that gives me an easier time in actually doing our table references. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this data and then I'm going to go up here to format table and I'll format that as a table and hit OK. So now that's a table and I can refer to that table a lot easier in my formulas. So I'm going to click anywhere in it. I'm going to give it a name. We'll go to table design. I'm just going to call this TBL underscore data. Now that is our data table. For our correlation, what we want to do is actually take a look at how the counter movement jump and the broad jump are related. Usually what I'll do is just put counter movement jump and then um, dash broad jump or whatever the first variable is that I'm looking at and then dash second variable. This is going to be really easy to do in Excel because there's, a, there's two formulas that we can use to do this. The first one is going to be equals corel, O-R-R-E-L. And what this does is returns the correlation, correlation coefficient between two data sets. And if you don't know what a correlation is, it is basically how um, two data sets are related to each other. And if we get a number back of one, that means they are perfectly related. When we change one of them, the other one is going to change by a predetermined amount. If it is 0.8, we know that they're pretty, they're very strongly related so that we, when we change one of them, the other one is very likely to change. And then if it's a 0 0.6, it, they're moderately related and some of the variation in, in one will account for some of the variation in the other. So all we do now is we type in equals corral, open that up and I'm just going to select my first column and then I'm going to hit comma and select my second column and close that bracket down and hit enter. And you can see that it gives us a value of 0 0.73. So what this is telling us is that 73% of the variance in broad jump can be explained by the counter movement jump variable. And in this case, people with higher um, counter movement jumps tend to have higher broad jump scores. If this was a negative value, what it would tell us is that people with higher counter movement jumps tend to have lower broad jump scores. So that is how we sort of read that. And then if we wanted to do it the other way, what we could do is we can put equals Pearson. And what this is, is just doing a different calculation, but gets to the same um, end goal. And I will open that bracket up in the same way that we did with the Corel function. We just select the two. And then when I hit enter, you can see that it gives me the exact same value. Now, one thing that I like to do when I'm calculating out my correlations is give them a little bit of a color scheme. And if I have this perfect, very strong and moderately strong in here, it's really easy now for me to add a conditional format because I will just highlight these three 
and then hold down control and I'm going to highlight where I have my correlation and then when I go to conditional formatting I'll go to color scales and I want the green one to be the best so I'm going to check check this first one here green yellow red scale and hit OK and you can see if we were to change this you'll see that it um, changes to reflect what the actual correlation is so then the final step would be just to graph these values so I would take the first column if I select here and then here holding down control and go to insert and then recommended charts it's going to give me the option to put in a scatter plot but if I was looking in all charts we would want to go to um, XY scatter and we would want this one here so I'm going to hit OK and it gives me my chart I'm going to delete the chart title and you can see that we have our cluster values one thing you might want to do is if you select down here where the values are on the x-axis we could change this axis a little bit so I can select here then go over to my format axis on the side to get there all I would do is right click here and click format axis and if we click here um, sorry if we click on the axis options we could actually change the minimum value so we know in this case nobody has a lower vertical jump than 20 so if we made this 20 what you can see is it spreads out my um, chart really nicely and then we could do the same thing on the y-axis we know that no one has a lower um, broad jump than 200 so I could give that a value oh sorry one person does we give this a value of 150 and you can see it just makes our chart look a little bit nicer and then from here what I want to do is if I select the chart sorry if I, if I select in the middle of the chart and then go to chart design, then go over to the left and hit add chart element, I can go to tread line and add a linear tread line. And what that does is it just gives us a visual representation of the relationship between the two values. And then if I click on the actual tread line, this tread line options is gonna open up and I can put my equation and my R intercept on the graph. And what that tells me is that 54% of the variance in one value is explained by the other. And that makes a lot of sense because people that would have high vertical power would typically have um, relatively good um, horizontal power. So that's just one way to start to draw some relationships between some of the fitness testing values that you are collecting. I encourage you to do these types of relationships between all of the fitness testing data that you have and start to find out the relationships are and allow it to guide your training prescription. So I hope this video helps you out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and share it on social media. And I will see you in the next video.